what is the proof for god what is the evidence to the explanations of vedanta should we believe in this blindly you are simply talking about some claims that have been made in an ancient outdated book these are the kinds of comments that we got for our previous video that we had made on the idea of god as per advaita vedanta now i think this is a valid question to ask especially if we are asking this from a place of sincerity and seeking so in this video we will go very deep to understand the answers to this The Advaita channel is about consciousness and conscious creation. Here we explore Vedanta and various other ancient teachings from India to understand the nature of reality and to consciously create our lives. Now, this video is not particularly structured in any way. I'm going to simply give my understanding and my explanation for this question. First of all, there is a certain segment of people who are genuinely curious and they are seeking and they are coming from a place of curiosity and then there is a certain segment which is coming from a place of arrogance and assumption so if you have already assumed that you know everything then obviously any teaching cannot take you anywhere only if you have an open mind can there be such a thing as knowledge that can come into your mind with this let us begin our journey into understanding god first of all before we even start this inquiry let us define god clearly now different religions different philosophies and different schools of thought define god in slightly different ways but the common thread among all of these definitions of god or the explanations of god is that god is infinite god is all powerful god is pure god is light and god is love so these are some of the common elements in the explanation of god now within sanatana dharma there are different schools of thought and there are different philosophies that explain the ultimate reality among these schools of thought and philosophies vedanta which is the conclusion or the philosophical explanations of the vedas concerning the nature of reality are considered to be the highest teaching that there is by the hindus now within these upanishads and within advaita vedanta which was taught by adi shankaracharya by swami vivekananda ramana maharshi nisargadatta maharaj and many many great teachers and philosophers the explanation of ultimate reality is like this whether we call it god or the ultimate reality or the infinite intelligence it doesn't matter what we are talking about is a transcendent and immanent reality which is within which the entire universe exists and which is within which the entire universe at one point dissolves in reality that ultimate truth or god or consciousness is the only thing that truly exists as per advaita vedanta so we are discussing god as per the explanation of advaita vedanta and even within vedanta there is something called as ishvara which is the god of the manifested universe and then there is brahman or infinite consciousness now for me in my explanation i consider the ultimate reality as god so now we are not looking at any other explanations of god we are trying to understand god as per the teachings of upanishads with this let us go further so how can we go about understanding this and how can we go about proving this first of all the way that the ultimate reality is explained in vedanta is very direct and it is very practical it is in our own experience like we understood god is defined as consciousness by vedanta and i don't have to prove to you what consciousness is or whether consciousness exists because we are conscious right now 
and i also do not have to prove to you that consciousness is fundamental because consciousness is fundamental this is the most evident thing that there is in this universe in fact this is self evident it is because i am conscious that i am speaking right now it is because of the consciousness that i am that i understand things that i experience different things and i am living this life so i don't have to prove to you consciousness in fact i can challenge you that you prove to me what is matter you prove the existence of matter apart from consciousness you give me the evidence of the existence of the world and the universe apart from consciousness this is more difficult to do than to explain consciousness or experience consciousness just think about this deeply if you simply close your eyes and think about what is the most fundamental experience that you have as a human being as a person in this world it will be the experience of being i exist this is the most truthful thing that i can say i exist is the ultimate truth because everything else comes after it the existence of the world the existence of matter and energy and the universe and different things within the universe all comes after i exist only because i exist and only because i am conscious i can say that there is something apart from me also so in this way the fundamental truth of our own experience is our own existence the existence of consciousness this is how we must look at reality as per the teachings of vedanta i exist this is the only thing that i can honestly say with absolute confidence because everything else might be a simulation everything else is transient everything else comes and goes within our dream we think that the dream simulation is real and we experience different things within the dream as something that is real but once we wake up we realize that it was all an illusion and in the waking world again we go through various experiences assuming that they are real and we get involved with life without recognizing the fundamental reality of reality which is consciousness it is because that i am i experience so the existence of the world depends on my consciousness now when i say this don't think that i'm saying because of my mind or because i open my eyes the universe exists vedanta is talking about something which is much more deeper than this but this is how we must begin to look at reality so as per vedanta this is the place from which we must start our inquiry the inquiry about the nature of reality about the nature of god or about anything else the starting point must be consciousness because this is the most direct and the most evident thing that there is in our own experience how can we start with the world because the existence of the world is dependent on our consciousness our awareness now let us look at this more deeply let us look at the word evidence the word evidence comes from latin which is evident or evidentia which means to notice or to observe it can also mean that which is obvious now think about this deeply what is the most obvious thing in this world if you have to pick one thing which is the most obvious thing which is the most evidential to you which is that thing if you inquire about this deeply the answer that you will come to is your own existence this is why time and time again ramana maharshi said ask who am i who is the one who is asking the question this is the most direct experience that we have this is the most obvious thing to us that is our own existence and that we are consciousness and then we can say everything else appears to this consciousness so consciousness is the fundamental essence of reality and this is self evident the fundamental problem with most of what modern science is doing is that it is assuming 
that the world exists apart from us without inquiry without questioning it what the upanishads ask us to do instead is to inquire this assumption inquire the assumption that the world exists apart from the consciousness that we are now within vedanta there is a framework called avastha treya viveka which is a framework which will explain to us what consciousness is and let us look at it now because it is relevant here in the morning we wake up and we brush our teeth we take a bath and we get on with our lives we do different things in this world and we are indulged in activity throughout the day here our physical body is active and then at night we come to our homes we get into our rooms and we go to sleep and after we go to sleep we dream different dreams and within the dreams the physical body is dormant and the mind is active the mind stimulates the dream environment and we experience different things in the dream world as a different person as the dream ego now after this at certain point in time we go to sushupti which is the deep sleep within the deep sleep our conscious mind no longer exists but we still exist because once we wake up from deep sleep we claim that experience we can confidently say even after going through the deep sleep that i had slept i had a good night sleep so there was an i even during the deep sleep but our conscious mind or ego was not present there and after deep sleep we wake up and we continue the cycle again what vedanta asks us to do is to point out the common factor in these three states of being in jagrat avastha in swapna in sushupti in waking state in dreaming state and in the deep sleep state what is the common factor everything else is transient because in the external world things keep changing every day there are different things and even in the dream world everything keeps changing in the deep sleep there is no experience as such there is absolute stillness but something still continues even there because you are not dead even there right you wake up after deep sleep and you say that i was having a deep sleep so something continues throughout these three states of being what continues is consciousness this consciousness is who we are at the deepest level vedanta says that we are not this physical body we are not this mind now why are we discussing all this when we are trying to prove god if this is your question please bear with me because what ultimately vedanta says is that you are that tatvam asi you are that ultimate reality or god so vedanta is saying that the consciousness the infinite consciousness is god and our awareness is a channeled aspect of that infinite consciousness itself so this is the framework of avastha treya viveka now like this we spend days and years and our awareness is totally attached to the external world and within our dream it is attached or it is engaged with the dream world what we do not do is go inward vedanta asks us to take our attention from the external world to our internal being which will then reveal to us who we truly are and what god truly is external world is simply an image it is because of our sense perception that we experience the external world if you have watched the movie matrix the fundamental story of that movie revolves around the fact that our experiences and our reality can be simulated very easily even the virtual reality headsets and the virtual reality games that are now there on the market can easily do this can create a false reality for us to experience so how do we know that this physical world is real scientists are now questioning this 
more and more people are now thinking about whether this reality is actually real or not we do not know this we have simply assumed this the only thing that we are sure of is our own experience nobody can deny this nobody can say that i do not exist because i have the first hand experience of my own existence i know that i am this is the most primary this is the most honest thing that i can say that i am that i exist everything else might be a simulation might be a false assumption my own existence is not so when we start from this place and when we begin self inquiry and when we go deeper and deeper and peel the layers of conditioning what we will come to is that infinite consciousness this infinite consciousness is within which the universe exists the entire universe is an appearance in consciousness it exists in consciousness and it dissolves in consciousness and even our own lives if we look at it deeply the world appears in our consciousness when we wake up and the world dissolves once we close our eyes whether the world actually exists or whether the world is a simulation with some colors and sounds and certain sense perceptions we cannot be as sure as our own existence as that consciousness so consciousness doesn't need any external evidence or proof consciousness is self evident it is self luminous now there are different arguments for the existence of god and we will go through them one by one very quickly at first there is the cosmological argument this argument posits that everything that begins to exist has a cause the universe began to exist the scientific evidence points to the beginning of the universe therefore the universe has a cause second there is the fine tuning argument this argument suggests that the physical constants and laws of the universe appear to be finely tuned to allow for life implying an intelligent designer so it is based on scientific observations about the precise conditions needed for life and it aligns with the idea of an intelligent creator and then there is the moral argument this argument suggests that the existence of objective moral values implies the existence of god as their source then there is the argument from the nature of formation and some argue that the complex information found in dna and the laws of physics implies an intelligent source but all of this doesn't matter as per advaita vedanta the ultimate evidence needs to be experiential ultimately our experience of that infinite consciousness which happens through moksha or enlightenment is that aparoksha anubhuti it is a sort of first hand direct recognition of who we truly are and what god is and what reality is at that point every single one of us can say to ourselves that god exists with absolute conviction and so all of this is not theoretical but it is pointing towards having a first hand direct experience of god and vedanta challenges us to pursue this path and find out the truth for ourselves and with regards to this even if we look at what quantum physics is now saying it is mind blowing physics is now saying that atoms and cells and matter everything is 99.999% empty space it is emptiness and it is all potential energy and there is only 0.0001% or something called matter so the entire reality that we are seeing all around us is 99.9999 percent empty space it is emptiness but it still appears to exist this is what adi guru shankaracharya said a thousand years ago he said brahma satya jagat mitya jeevo brahmaiva napara he said consciousness is real the world and the time space reality is an appearance and jeeva which is you and me are one with that infinite consciousness in our essence and this is not a dogma this is not a belief system this is not a claim of an ancient text but this can be experienced first hand 
Shankaracharya calls this Aparoksha Anubhuti, a first-hand direct experience of who we are as that unconditioned infinite consciousness, which is the most fundamental aspect of reality, which is the starting point for everything. So, this doesn't require any evidence and this also cannot be proved for anyone else because it is a personal experience and it is a personal being for everyone. Your existence cannot be proved for anyone. You know that you exist. It is the most evident thing for you personally. But how can you convince others that you exist? So, nobody can come close to understanding your existence than you yourself. So, this is the starting point for our self-inquiry. And from here, we must go deeper and deeper to see what reality actually is. We must simply, without any false pretense, without any false assumptions, begin to contemplate on reality. We must think about how the external world is nothing but a set of sense perceptions that we gather because of our jnana indriyas or the sense organs and it is simply electrical signals that are created in the brain and it is basically a bunch of images and sounds that goes through our awareness. How can we say that that sense perception is more real than our own existence which is the consciousness? It is only because I exist that I see the world, like I said before. So, we should keep coming back to this and we must keep inquiring from this point to understand what God is, to understand what ultimate reality is. This was what I wanted to share with you today in this video. And if you want to pursue conscious creation further, which is about understanding the reality in this way through Vedanta and then going about consciously creating our life, the way we truly want to live, then check out our community come learning platform, the Advaita Conscious Society. The link will be in the description. And also, next you can go to this video that we had made on Vasanas, Vritti, Samskaras, Karma, etc. and how they take control of our life and lead us to living an unconscious life. So, check out this video next and I will see you in the next one. Thank you. Subscribe to Advaita to wake up. Shivoham.